Hey, what's up guys? How are you? Welcome back. It's me, your host, HeBot, and this is another episode of Toys in My Closet. And today I'm so excited, so excited to be able to take a look at some new Masters of the Universe Multiverse New Eternia and Sun Man Rulers of the Sun action figures. And as you see, we have Stratos from Classics and Sun Man from Rulers of the Sun, which everyone knows these are two winged warriors. Now, let's take a closer look at the packaging. You see it continues in the same style and aesthetic as the Masterverse has done thus far. So for all you Minton card collectors, you should be happy to know that Mintel has continued with the same style of packaging. Now these figures have been out a little bit out in the market now, maybe a month or two, but they're still fairly new and I got them not that long ago. Just really haven't been able to get to them. Here's Shadows and Packaging. New Eternia logo, which means it's based off factions that were created from either comics, artwork that was never released, or the original classic style stuff from the cartoon that they put together to create the new version of the figure, keeping the same aesthetics and style as the original vintage and classic style toy. Mattel logo in the corner, and this is a beautiful piece of art. Absolutely stunning piece of art. Of Stratos. I don't know who the artist is, but it's absolutely stunning. And in the background, as you can see there, also stunning, stunning artwork. And the cross cell in the back has Evil Inn in the Sorcerer's Mode. The Princess of Power, Frosta, Roboto from the Revelations cartoon, and obviously Stratos also available, as you can see here. Stratos is the Winged Warrior, one of the majestic, majestic mountain, no, Mystic Mountain, not all of Mystic Mountain now lay sc scattered in ruins and shards across the oceans of Eternia. You can read the rest there if you want. And then it says Stratos Swing It Warrior on the side. And of course, Masterverse on the top. 30 points of articulation and the proof of the actual UPC code. Now, let's take a look at the Sunman box. And as you can see, it's in celebration of the 40th anniversary of Masters of the Universe. Now, Rulers of the Sun, Sun Man looks absolutely great in packaging as well. Here's the logo, Sun Man, and then we turn it over. More awesome and amazing artwork done and created as well. And look at this one in the back, absolutely stunning. And there it says Sun Man, the greatest hero of them all in the world of Trifexa, Prince Sunny harnesses the power of the first sun to transform into Sun Man. Now, here's the cross cell. Battle Armor He-Man, Hero, and Jitsu, which I've had reviewed in my channel before. He's a little older, but I just took longer to get my hands on him. And he's been out a little longer. The greatest hero of them all, Sun Man. And then again, Masterverse, 30 points of articulation. Now, some man's story is he was created for a young boy when he was little by his mother and created her own toy line for him because he liked He-Man, but he was wondering why He-Man was only white and they didn't have really a black African-American He-Man, even though they had characters later on like Clam Champ. So she went out and created a character that was like a He-Man with certain types of powers and got his powers from the sun. And this was the design they came up with. Obviously, not exactly this. It was in vintage form and it was something that was separate from actual Masters of the Universe. All these years later, they actually 
amalgamated and created it and turned it into part of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe just to honor that lady and her son and to be more inclusive, so to speak, right? Uh, which is cool because it's just adding more awesome characters. As you can see, he looks great in the packaging with beautiful colors and it really pops. So let's take out these two wonderful characters out of packaging and take a closer look at them one by one. I'll be right in a blink of an eye. So sit back, relax, enjoy your digital drink, and hopefully you'll stick around for the whole review and unboxing and see what you think about these two new characters. I'll see you soon. And here we go, guys. Here we have some man and Stratos out of packaging. Now, I've been saying this for a while now, and I've been telling people, and a lot of, you know, like collectors and things of that nature, uh, for a while that a lot of people have been sleeping on the Masterverse line ever since the release of the first wave, where, you know, the reality was the only figures that really weren't that great because of the face scope was He-Man and Skeletor, because they really didn't represent the really actual look of the, you know, Revelations cartoon. But as far as figure quality, they were really, really good. They did a lot of different things that you've never seen before in the Masters of the Universe and with any of their collections and lines before. And now they finally started modernizing them. And I think that these figures have gotten better and better with every wave. And I really think right now they are the best toy line in mainstream, uh, you know, in the mainstream in mainstream stores, alongside GI Joe Classified. These are the two best lines I think going on right now, with the highest quality, giving us the best bang for our buck for the good price. Alongside also McFarlane Toys, although they're a little bit different, right? So. Let's take a look at these guys one by one. Let's start off with Sunman since he's the actual newest character. And as you can see right away, first things first, Sunman has a really cool sculpt. As you see, he has the golden yellow eyes. They gave him a nice fade on the side with the kid and play Kango or Cameo. I think it was. I forgot what it was called from back in the day. Um, and you see that he has really nice sculpting with kind of a straight stern look. And he has the wonderful shield guard that he has, right? Or his, on his uh, body, which is actually the, uh, his armor with what looks to be like a star with this nice gold. With these nice designs there, you see? In detail on the neck with the red and on the actual shoulders and then you see his arm guard and then you see his forearm guard with this nice gold plate with the actual details around it as well and it's a nice red glove as you see then you see the, the torso area the, uh, his belly, his belly area. and the same thing you see as this Nice black and green, neon green uh, dressing, like kind of like a, a skirt piece with the actual, you know, male trunks with the green. And you see all the details in the lining. Painted really well, nice and clean. As you see there, I did these slits so that I can split. His legs all the way up. Um, following the seam. Then you see going down in the boots. They both have stars with those nice details as well. And the boots being a nice original look as well. And then you have obviously his wonderful uh, wings. They come from the back. And he has in there in a nice yellow color, and this is what they look like from the back as well. So aesthetically, Sun Man is very eye candy, very eye pleasing because he has wonderful colors, and he looks very unique and different. But he still feels and has a uh, a look of of belonging right from the beginning 
two masters of the universe, the toy line itself. He feels like a master of the universe character or, you know, that been there from the very beginning. Um, especially with this execution and update version that they did for the Masterverse line, which is really, really cool. And I think it's awesome because it adds, uh, you know, uh, more characters to the roster, right? So, moving right along, let's take a look at now the classic Stratos. And immediately you'll notice that Stratos has a lot of new detail on his head, on his, you know, actual, his actual um, helmet with the nice black and the little gray eyebrow going on the top, his beard. And you see the, 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 the feathery uh, piece on the arms. And you notice that he has like the hair texture like the original with the blue harness. And he has this red feathery piece from the neck that was part of his version in the comic book. And you see all the details in the fur. And this one is in two pieces instead of one so it can split and holds on uh you know and is on so that you can actually bend it you know and have uh, no resistance or type of uh, you know uh awkward fold he has this piece here that's connected to the back which we'll see how it looks better a little later underneath he has this classic belt with all that detail with that nice matted gold the feathery trunks, which his trunks look like feather instead of just, uh, you know, like le like actual uh, animal fur like He-Man. In this case, it's bird feathers with some nice highlights in blue and dark and light blue. And then going down to his legs, all the details in his skin. Then he has the bird-like feet. And if you notice, this figure looks very bulky, very big. And I have to say, this Stratos looks the best than any other Stratos ever made. Even the one um, for classics. And I think the 2010 might have been a close uh, competitor for this one. But we never seen a version of that one. You know, with this high amount of detail and articulation. So it was very restricted based off the collection that they brought out for that line and for the 2000X, but this is absolutely the best struggles we've ever seen, in my personal opinion. Um, and with the, you know, uh, pinless joints and all the cuts of articulation and even, you know, cloth goods that they added to these line or to this particular, you know, Masterverse line has changed uh, how good these figures really have, can have come out and can really be. Uh, and this is why I keep stressing how good this Masterverse line really is. And people have slept on it, in my personal opinion. So, now let's take a look real quick at their individual accessories. So, we'll start off with some man's main weapon. Which looks like a gigantic sword spear. Or tip of a spear that's turned into like a hatchet or an axe. With nice details with that matte red. And then the handle itself. Then he comes with two additional fisted hands. One open for each side. And a fisted. One fisted and two open ones for weapon holding. And then he has one that is uh, actual open here like this. Like open splay for uh, the ability to hold on to the shield in the way they're designed. Because this is a shield, this is how it's designed. You slide it in and it holds. And the shield is just a nice green with the red and then the gold design that looks like a star almost in the middle. It looks really nice and it's really nicely painted. That's another thing I can't stress enough. The paint job is always very excellent on these Masterverse figures. So, now for Strato's, um actual 
uh, accessories. He has this breathing apparatus that is supposed to make it more realistic, like when he flies, so that he's able to breathe while he's in the air, which is really cool. It's done in a nice kind of royal blue, as you can see, with a nice sheen, and it has details on it. And this is the rope that connects to his air tank in the back now, or to that belt that comes with the air coming from the tank in the back, you know, as it's supposed to be. Then he comes with an extra set of hands, and these are open for flying. These will be his flying hands. You see all the details, the veins, the hair, the nails. Very, very nicely done. And you see here, his tank has flying pack. It looks like wings and the top. Very classic style look. And this is where, you know, the boost would come out of for giving him the ability to fly. And then this is a new interpretation of what was called in the filmation cartoon, the Staff of Avion. And this is the new interpretation of it. It's a lot smaller with these details here on the side and then the charm that's supposed to be holding on the top. Which was, if it was translucent, it would look even better, but I guess it's for cost efficiency. That's why they couldn't. And then the staff, it looks more like a mace now um, because it's smaller, but, you know, um, they try to go with a different design and look, which is cool, you know? So now we'll take a quick look at each of their individual articulation. So we'll start off with Sun Man's head, and it goes left, right, and down that much, and up that much, and it has a little bit of tilt. Now here in the shoulders, the arms go up all the way like that. You have 180 degrees. You got that bicep swivel. And you have the double jointed elbow. And you have swivel in the wrist. And a hinge system in this side that goes in and out. On the other side of the hand, the hand goes in and out as well, and it also moves with the wrist. Now we have the torso cut, which moves really well. You can kind of move it forward a little bit like that, and move it back a little bit like that. And then it goes left and right. And you have a waist swivel. And you got the rotation on the thigh, the actual double on the knee. Then you have a boot swivel. And you have the toe and feet, which go back all the way that much, forward about that much, and a forward pin rocker. Then the wings articulate in or all the way out, like so. So he would look like this from the front. Right, he would look like that from the front. If you see him standing, if you wanted to have him that way. Plus, he does a almost full-on Van Damme split. And the legs can go up that much. And go back about that much. So, as for the articulation in some men, it's par for the course, but works well for what he has to offer as a figure. So, 
it's pretty far from the courts, like I said, but works good enough that we're gonna be able to put him in a lot of great poses. And here we have Stratos. So Stratos can look left, right. He has a little bit of tilt, not too much. He can look down that much and look up very, very little. He doesn't have the hands that's allowing him to do so. So the arms, that much. Even with this piece, it doesn't really try to retain or restrict. He has the bicep right there. He has also the double jointed elbow, as you can see. It's a little harder, but it's still there. Swivel on the wrist, and then in and out hinge, which I believe is the same on, yes, this, this sign. All right. And we also have a, a torso cut. This move is also pretty decent. So he could go forward that much and then hyper extend back about that much, just a little bit of left, left and right, there you go, left and right, it's okay, it's not too bad, and over here in the waist we have waist swivel, no restriction on the leg, you do the van dance split, have die swivel and we have the double on the knee and his shin guard he has like a what would be the boom swivel right and then here his feet they're bare but it goes back that much angles up. about that much not that much but enough to get the job done and so again part for the course when it comes to your articulation but since they are you know new characters with somewhat of different features and scopes then I like to try to stay in touch and, and, and make sure that I can check out each character individually just in case the uh, articulation had to be modified or changed due to the sculpting of the character or the figure itself. So now let's take a closer look at the figures with their accessories. So here we have the Sun Man with his weapons. And as you can see, he looks very cool, very majestic looking, like he says in his bio. The colors, like I said, they actually are very vibrant, very beautiful looking, very soft and easy on the eye, and therefore makes Sun Man a very cool looking character, just in aesthetics and, and looks and colors alone, make him look pretty, pretty darn Badass, and you know, a must own for the collection. Uh, he's just so cool looking, man. He looks so badass. He looks good. He looks really good. And here we have Stratos with his a staff from Avion. And if you notice, I have him really cool looking, but I have him with his basic, basic, classic Stratos look. Now, Stratos. He's always been like a character that for many, including myself, he was kind of just like a boring looking type of character. But, you know, he definitely with this one looks a lot, a lot better. So, 
let me put on the other stuff that he has on so you can see what it looks like in his full Masterverse New Eternia style and look. And here we have, again, Stratos, but in this form and this time, with his entire attire and look and accessories. This is what he looks like in his complete form and fashion with the New Eternia look with, you know, his uh, backpack, his jetpack with the two uh, things strapped to the back that go to the front and go connected to his face mask as the air apparatus so you can breathe and also he has the um, he also has the um, what you call that he also has the uh, staff oh there's another thing he has that you can put on him so what we'll do is we'll remove the head real quick and put this on because this is also part of him which is the feathered wings in the neck which I forgot to put on sorry about that ladies and gentlemen I apologize for that I did not mean to forget but here we are so once again put him up here um, with his head turned in all of his glory and you see there how good and till and badass if you ask me in my personal opinion he actually looks he looks incredible Stratos looks absolutely incredible in his new eternia form with all of his accessories so I guess now what we'll do is take a closer look at both figures side by side with other figures from other lines and the comparisons. Okay guys, so here we have one of the first comparisons. And as you can see here, I have the G.I. Joe Classified series, Dr. Mindbender, Hasbro Pulse Exclusive. Very hard figure to get thus far. I was lucky enough to acquire him. I have not reviewed him because I kind of want to do a big bulk review of all the G.I. Joes I got since last year to this year. Um, and I haven't gotten to it because it's going to be a big one. So uh, forgive me for that, but an amazing figure. And also the SH Figure Arts, I believe it's called Hero Goku Super Saiyan. He's all in black, as you can see. Awesome looking figure. Uh, but you also see the disparity between the Masterverse uh, 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 <clears throat> Sunman and Stratos, which... I have uh, one on the uh, actual flight stand and one that's standing on its feet. And the disparity uh, is still there. It looks like Mindbender is kind of the same size, but I do have Mindbender in a stand. And Stratos is not standing straight forward. So you can see that uh, Stratos and Sunman are more in the seven to seven and a half inch scale versus the five and a quarter and six inch width. So, you know. Hasbro uh, Pulse, so or GI Joe Classified. Sorry, forgive me for that. So let's move these two gentlemen out, and let's do another comparison. We'll bring in um, the Mesco 112 Collective X Men Bishop, which this figure is absolutely incredible. One of the best figures. Of last year, my personal opinion. I still yet to review it. And let's do maybe another McFarland. Uh, last Airbender. I forget his name, but he's from the Last Airbender. As you can see, he's a little bit more on the same scale as them because McFarland does actual seven and seven and a half inch scaled figures, and even nine and ten inch with the mega scale quarter figures. So. There's a look at those there. Uh, so we can also take a look at, real quick at, let's see, oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta grab something really fast. Also, let's bring in the 
we have the Fortnite, I believe this is the Victory Series Condor, which is a very cool looking figure from Hasbro, okay, um, right there. And we, let's bring in, uh, let's see, uh, let's bring in a Star Wars Attack of the Clone uh, Trooper that was also exclusive from the animated series line in Walmart. And that'll give you another idea of what it looks like with different lines and different scales and uh, things of that nature. So what I'll do now is I want to get a quick pause and I'm going to show side by side comparisons of the actual figures that make more sense to compare uh, with these guys, which is a uh, comparison to another figure of the same character, but from a different line. So I'll be right back. So here we have it, side by side, the Masters of the Universe Origins Estratos, next to the Multiverse New Eternia. And like I said before, these are very, very indicative and great representations of the vintage, even though they are modified and modernized from the articulation to some indifferences, even with the face sculpt and stuff of that nature. But again, as you can see them next to the new Stratos, that's why I say this line has a very special place in my heart because this is how I got into He-Man when I was very young and little. And these figures, when I was young and little, looked absolutely incredible to me. But by today's standards and me growing up and being a man now, and I appreciate the artistry of more realistic, stylized things and anime and movies and things of that nature. I really think this figure is absolutely a masterpiece next to the originals and the original look because it just looks so incredible. It is an evolution of what I knew as a kid to now as what I know as an adult and how I feel with my taste as an adult. I feel like this destroys this. And I know a lot of people may think I'm gonna, you know, may think I'm crazy, may get offended by that, but I'm just trying to be honest and as realistic as possible with you guys. The vintage stuff is great, but there's no way that you can tell me with a straight face as a He-Man fan that you can't see the greatness and the and amazing evolution and appreciation for the new stuff of today in modern time. This is what it should be for adults now with He-Man, our adult version of this character and an evolution of how better modern toys have gotten compared to the old school stuff. So I love it, but this is uh, absolutely incredible to me in my personal opinion. So let's move on along and take a look at Sun Man. And here we have Sun Man. Now again, Sun Man is a very cool looking figure. He really pops with his colors, his uniqueness, his look. He just looks really fantastic. And again, as you can see here, this is the representation of the style that was based off the original toy and that it was trying to be part of the Masters of the Universe classic way back when. And again, cool figure for the time. Good representation for the origins. But when you compare this to this, I, as an adult, like I said, have to pick this Sun Man a thousand times before this one. Because it just, it looks absolutely incredible next to this one. It just, it is what it is. And I know you guys don't like to, to hear that, but that is that is an argument I feel can should not even exist. We have to be real. This evolution of these masterverses are absolutely incredible. And those of you that have been holding back 
I highly recommend that you don't go out and get them because you're going to realize how good they really are. And you might even regret it when you realize it way later down the road and it might be too late. So they look absolutely great together. But again, I will always pick the Master vs. Vers Origins. This is what they look like side by side. Even on stands, you see? So now let's go to the end of the review and my final thoughts. All right, guys. So here we are. Here we have Sunman from the new Masters of the Universe Multiverse alongside new Eternia from the Masters of the Universe Multiverse Stratos. Classic versus, you know, new. Even though Sunman was in the classic time before. So, what do I think about both of these figures? I think they complement each other very well. They're two heroic characters. They're winged warriors. Obviously, one having wings that come out of his body. They're, he is like an archangel, which is what Sun Man kind of represents. And Stratos being a man of bird, a bird man, but that does not have natural wings to fly. He actually has a whole gimbal and component, fire, you know, backpack with wings to help him fly, even though he was born a bird man. Uh, I guess to make it feel more grounded and kind of to make it make a little sense, uh, comparing it to real life situations. That was the idea behind the design. But again, this was the 80s, so a lot of the designs were goofy and kind of quirky or quirky to begin with. So they didn't really have to make a lot of sense, right? Um, but again, they're beautiful figures, great quality, amazing painting, good articulation, obviously par for the course, which you're familiar with anything that's Masterverse, you'll be familiar with these. And also the fact that they're very, very affordable. An amazing price of $20 and maybe in some places, $24.99. So again, they don't break your pocket. They display really well on the shelf. If you're a Masters of the Universe fan, without question, it is a no-brainer. It's a must-buy, a must-own, and embrace these new characters just like we embrace the new characters in Classics because it just adds more figures and character selection to the roster and to the world, which they incorporate and could incorporate in new comic books like they're doing now, or in future iterations of animations like cartoons or hopefully soon the real live movie like they will have or supposedly is coming to Netflix. So I give it a thumbs up. I really highly recommend them. Go out and check, seek them if you can. I believe that both Target ha has both of these available. One you can get through mail order only, which is Sunman. And... Stratos, he's in almost every Target I've gone into so far. That wave have been readily available, or people are not buying it, whichever one. I'm not really sure, but I do know that when I go in Target, I find him. He's usually there, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, um, and so he's an easier find. That is what I'm trying to say. So let me know what you guys think about him in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the two figures, if you like them, if you don't like them, if you already have them, or if you are going to now want to buy them due to my review and my overlook and my, you know, thoughts on them, which is always good to know that I can help out. And it's good for great gaming or not gaming, but figure collecting conversation. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't like it. If you thought these figures were absolute garbage, please let me know now we go as well. It's just interesting to see. Just don't be this, you know, toxic or disrespectful, please. As always, you guys can always find me in any of my social media outlets and platforms. It's all down in the description below. And if you ever want to help out my channel in any way, shape, or form, because you love what I do, like what I do, and you want me to continue to do it and grow and get bigger, there is a way you can do it from the kindness of your heart or if you have the means to and just want to help because you love what I do. It's all down with my PayPal and Patreon information in the description. Or if you want to donate something to the channel you want me to highlight, review, 
or showcase. It would be an honor. I would be more than glad to do so. It would be, I'm very humbled and I will be more than grateful to do it. Um, just do hit me up on one of those social media DMs and we'll work out the particulars. So this is your host, Hebot, signing off with another episode of Toys in My Closet. The Masters of the Universe, Multiverse, Sun Man, Rulers of the Sun, and New Eternia Stratos. See you in the next one, guys. Love you and bye-bye.